Right, so basics time. And what we're going to do is cover various styles of pegs that say that we find up and down the countries at different commercials that we go to. And first up, definitely, probably mine, one of mine and Andy's favourites is going to be a snake lake. So we're here today, very, very typical snake lake. This one in particular is Moors Lake. Moors Lake? Moors Lake at Cudmore Fisheries, which is one that we have done lots of filming on in the past. And what I want to talk about is the areas you want to target. I mean, the basic topography, the way... Um, snake lakes are and the best places to target at certain times of year and the things that you're looking for to make sure you get the best out of your session so without further ado let the waffling begin as, as you can see behind me beautiful standard what are we going to say here 14 and a half meter a little bit further snake lake that's the, the typical distance that you're going to get at most snake lakes is sort of 13 to 16 meters very rarely it's any more than that and if it is it's probably not a snake lake because it's a bit wider than what we're saying it is so Everything's nice and compact. I mean, and the way I like looking at snake legs is you've basically got a square to fish in. Yeah, up until the next anglers, the next pegs or whatever, you've literally got not a square, what is it? A rectangle. Yeah, a square's all the same, isn't it? It's a rectangle, you've got a rectangle to fish in. That's what you've got to look at. You've basically got a rectangle that you can cover. And within that, you have to understand the biggest thing that is you need to work out is where the slopes are. I mean, they dictate so much when it comes to the snake lakes in the depths that you're going to find, the silt that you're going to find on the bottom and where different species are going to be at different times of the year. So that is the very, very first thing I want to identify is where my slopes are. Being in that I'm going to have a near side slope that's going to go down to whatever sort of distance, depending on the gradient of the slope at each particular venue. Then you're gonna have a lovely flat spot in the middle, or maybe not necessarily lovely, but you're gonna have a big flat spot in the middle, and then you're gonna have another slope on the far bank. Every snake lake that I go to seems to differ in the, the size of those slopes. I mean, some you have a very, very small trough in the middle, some you have a very, very, um, a very slow, gradual uh, slope on the far bank and each can dictate where the fish want to be on each day. So what I'm going to do is go through from, how are we going to start? Yeah, I'm going to start literally where I'd start a match. Work my way across, then work my way back, talking about the sort of things that I'm going to try and find. And as I say, first thing I want to do is find the bottom of the near slope. Now that it's getting warm, we're on, when are we going to say? Start of April to probably some point in October, the fish are going to be feeding, they're going to be moving all over the place, and a lovely area to start is just on the bottom of that near slope. Yeah, not onto the bottom, because as I've said, you've got those two big lovely slopes, a big flat area in the middle. The flat area is where all the silt, all the muck, all the debris, that's where it's going to accumulate. It's going to be a bit nasty. And at this time of year, once fish start grubbing about in it, it can be quite difficult to get bites. It's often the area on a snake lake where all the bubbles come up, which in turn makes the fish quite difficult to catch by fishing on it. So I try and avoid it myself. Once it gets nice and warm, the fish don't want to be there. What I want to do is come just up that slope a little bit. So what I'll do, I'll find the deepest water, drop a rig into the deepest water. It's normally going to be four to six foot on average. And I'm going to put it right down the middle of the canal and I'm going to work my way back just to find the bottom of that slope. And as soon as it starts coming up a little bit, that's my favourite area to fish to begin my match quite often. If there's going to be lots of fish feeding, there's fish all over the place. Just starting short, it could be on a top kit, could be on a top five who knows it all depends on that gradient but i'm going to find that just where it comes up out the silt goes a little bit hard bit of an incline that is a lovely lovely area to fish both at the start of your session and later on when you can really really rock up and feed really well so that's a lovely area to, to fish there mirror reflection of that you'll find exactly the same thing quite often on the far bank so where i'll find exactly this rig just up the slope on this side quite often i'll try and find the same thing on the other side yeah, on high pressure days when there's lots of people on the bank, when the fish aren't feeding as much, that's the best area to start in. I mean, if I feel it's really tight pegging, every single peg's in, then all the fish are going to get pushed across. I mean, they're not going to be as willing to feed. So that area at the bottom of the far bank slope, another brilliant, brilliant area to feed. It's often sort of, on average, about a metre and a half to two metres off the far bank, again, depending on that gradient that we'll have to find out on the day. But brilliant, brilliant area again, just out the silt, wonderful area that the fish seem to settle in when they're, I'm not going to say not happy, but when they're not feeding. So by going to them there, great place to catch fish. And that's my second point. Often when I've caught a few fish here, I'll move over there, or if I feel it's going to be a tricky day, I'll start at that two thirds of the way across. Uh, what are we going to do next? I'm going to cover the far bank before we come in the edges. So far bank, really, really simple. Obviously, you're going to look for features as we do at every single peg that we have. I want to know if there's any big rush beds, 
spiky Tina Turner grasses, whatever they're called, whatever these things are called. Great, great fish holding features. I, I mean, and it's where they live. On snake lakes, that is where the fish are never pressured, often where the bigger, clever fish live, up and down that far bank. It's where they live, it's where they keep out the way of anglers, often undercut, things like that, the far banks. Massive, massive, wonderful feature. Best thing about snake lakes is you've always got some sort of feature, be it a tiny little bed of grass or a bed of rushes, there's always something really nice to fish to. And how you want to work that out, it's just as you would on a margin in the summer. Is that how you need to treat your far bank in that the fish could be tight against the far bank and you want to get right into that shallow water as much as you can to prevent liners, to prevent foul looking, just to concentrate the fish a bit more. But it's the depth that dictates whether they want to be there or not. Again, all, the, all snake lakes vary a little bit in that right against the far bank, literally as far as I can get in, I'd normally look for little muddy holes where I can touch the mud. I mean, very, very popular way of fishing, mud line fishing. You'll hear that spoken about a lot. And that's all about getting tight to that far bank as much as you possibly can to stop the fish getting behind your bait. Really, really important area to fish if it's deep enough. So what I'm looking at is sort of 10 to 18 inches, 20 inches at a push. That's the area that I want to target, but right against the far bank to stop them fish coming back. Great area catching when the fish really, really are feeding freely. Loads of fish to catch and they're willing to go into that shallow water. The next line across, so I've spoke about the very top of the shelf. I've spoke about the bottom of the shelf when it comes to those two lines. There's also quite often a line in between them. Again, on the trickier days when the fish want to hang off just a little bit, and it's sort of, what do we refer it to as? The reed line sort of thing. So you're not going right into the little nooky nacky holes right at the back. Often fishing, like in line with the edge of the reeds that are sticking out the most. Probably about two to three foot off the far bank can be a great area. Yeah, you often find it a little bit deeper than what you're going to find right at the back. By dropping down into an extra 10 inch, maybe even an extra foot, all depends again on the gradient. It can be a great area that the fish just want to sit in. You can catch plenty of fish before they want to go right to the back, right into that shallow water when they can feed. But by having all those rigs covered, all those areas of the lakes covered, you're always covering yourself to find out where the fish want to be on any particular day. Right, so with the far bank covered, I'm going to move across this way. And I'm going to constrict myself slightly and say the middle, which is an area I don't really want to fish down the middle of, uh, on the bottom of, because of that silt. That said, it is a vital area that I'll often feed, particularly if there's a lot of F1s in a snake lake, it's a lot of hide, and it's going to be my shallow line. Depending on the conditions, as long as it's not too sunny, you find that there's a bit of cloud cover, a bit nice, a bit overcast, the middle can be a massively, massively productive area for fishing shallow, which is where I'll often feed maggots or casters really regular with the look at drawing a lot of fish in, and because I've got that increased depth there, because I've got that four to six foot in most cases, that's going to be my shallow area. I may stick a rig over the bottom to catch an odd fish, but if I'm honest, the middle for me during the summer months, it is all about shallow fishing at most of the snake lakes we go. Very noisy geese today. And lastly, we're coming back over this side. And the way you have to look at your margins on a snake lake is, I'm not going to say it's different to anywhere else. In fact, it's not. It's pretty much identical to everywhere else. But the beauty you have here, and the best thing for me about snake lakes is, I've pretty much always got my rigs covered. So the rigs that I've used on the far bank, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever you can't mirror those rigs and have the, exactly the same rigs that you're using over there, down the edge. I mean, you need to treat your margins exactly the same as you would your far bank, in that the fish could be any point on that slope. You've got that lovely slope going, the fish may be tight to it if they're feeding really, really, really well. They may be just down a little bit, they may be at the bottom of the slope. I mean, that's how you have to treat snake lakes. There's a mirror image of everything you do across. You can do exactly the same thing down the edge. But what you do tend to find is the fish want to be tight across to start with. Then they might come down the middle, catch a load of shallow, and later on, as they gain confidence, you're going to catch a load of fish down the edge, just as you would on standard any sort of lake. But by having those rigs covered in as many depths as possible, that is what makes you keep in touch with the fish and have a much nicer session catching fish throughout instead of just waiting for them to come in that shallow water. So, yeah pretty much as basic as it gets, that is one-to-one -one of snake lakes.